And um, good morning, good afternoon to all our participants and of course to um, Dr. Sergio Ortiz. So um, for this uh, afternoon, I will be um, discussing the opportunities in the EFTA markets, focusing on Switzerland and Liechtenstein. So I'll start with uh, something brief about EFTA and then um, go to the countries, um, Switzerland and Liechtenstein, the exports the tariffs, and useful links. So uh, just a bit about EFTA. Um, this is just to, you know, to uh, correct any um, misunderstanding. So EFTA is um, the European Free Trade Association comprised of Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Norway, and Iceland. It was established in 1960 as an alternative trade bloc for European countries that were unable or unwilling to join the then European Economic Community. Now we call them as the European Union. So even within Europe, um, meron ding blocks, so may factions. So this EFTA is another group. So um, EFTA is quite um, um, aggressive in terms of their um, in forging trade relations with various countries. Um, currently, they have um, trade, uh, trade agreements with uh, 51 countries. So um, that includes, of course, the EU and then the other 24 countries uh, around the world. Um, in ASEAN, um, they, have, they have an FTA with Singapore and also with Indonesia. And negotiations are ongoing with uh, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Thailand. Um, in relation to the Philippines, uh, the Philippines EFTA FTA was signed in 2016 and the entry into force was in 2018. Um, earlier, it was mentioned already the approved exporter scheme, which is uh, one of the features of the FTA that facilitate the processing of imports and exports between the Philippines and EFTA. And um, as you know, um, the EFTA countries are, you know, on the other side of the world. So in terms of uh, products and the economies, um, we are complementary. So I'd like to, you know, just uh, briefly mention some features of the FTA. Um, although I know that uh, ASIC uh, Ms. Joji of the BOC has, uh, you know, somehow um, touched on them. Um, but with the FTA, um, there will be an abolition of more customs duties on imports of industrial products. So that includes fish and other marine products. And then there are tariff concessions on um, agricultural products. So this is, you know, good news for many of our food processors and also our farmers. The FTA covers a, um, um, a breadth of uh, chapters that includes goods, services, intellectual property, government procurement, competition, trade and sustainable development, and dispute settlement. Now, um, I will focus on the two countries um, that uh, the office currently, um, the Philippine Trade and Investment Center in Bern currently um, cover. Um, it's Switzerland and Liechtenstein. I'll be using um, the acronyms uh, CH for Switzerland and then LI for Liechtenstein. So the two countries are actually in a customs and currency union. Um, they both use the Swiss francs. And in terms of uh, um, trade statistics, they are, their um, trade numbers are lumped together because they are in a union. Um, the union was signed um, um, very early on in 1923. And um, it, um, we're in the Swiss laws uh, applies also to Liechtenstein. Um, in relation to the Philippines, we have the Joint Economic Commission um, that serves as a mechanism to enhance trade and investment relations with Switzerland. Now, uh, let me just uh, briefly, you know, um, um, show um, and see how the two countries compare with the Philippines. So in terms of uh, the area, um, Philippines is, of course, bigger than the two. Um, Liechtenstein is actually one of the smallest countries in the world. You know, it's the sixth smallest country. And Switzerland, um, we are, I think, seven times bigger than Switzerland. In terms of uh, borders, um, Liechtenstein and Switzerland are both landlocked countries. So they are surrounded by various countries like Austria, um, Germany, France, Italy. And that will give you an idea how, how the influence of uh, these countries around them and how also Switzerland and Liechtenstein also influence uh, the countries that 
are also surrounding them. Um, whereas compared to the Philippines, um, we are an archipelago. We are just surrounded by waters. So you may notice um, that um, as I move on with my slides, um, there is uh, some commonality um, with the, you know, Liechtenstein Switzerland together with the other countries in Europe, while the Philippines, you know, we are more homogeneous. So in terms of population, um, the two countries are quite small. Actually, Manila has uh, even a bigger population compared to Switzerland. Um, but we will see how their economies are actually, you know, bigger uh, compared to the Philippines. So um, the languages are also quite varied, um, quite influenced by the countries that are around them. And then in terms of GDP, um, Switzerland um, is uh, double the GDP of the Philippines, uh, which makes, you know, these countries um, 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 enabling them with higher purchasing power. And also um, we will see later that their economies are quite export oriented. So um, since we had the FTA in 2018, how did we fare? How, how are we utilizing the FTA? So this um, is a comparative, um, 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 is the um, yearly uh, in, uh, trade data. So to show us um, where's the trend. So if uh, you remember, um, the FTA was signed in 2016 but it was only entered into force in 2018. So it was only in 2018 when the FTA was actually um, um, uh, implemented. So back in 2016, uh, the, the Philippine exports to Switzerland and Liechtenstein was at $512 million. Um, dollars. So these values are all in millions of dollars. And then um, it has been growing even right now, um, even in 2020 when we had the pandemic. You will also see in terms of the um, imports, our imports, Philippine imports uh, from the two countries, Switzerland and Liechtenstein, um, it is quite, you know, um, stable within the 300 million range. So in terms of trade balance, um, um, it is good that it is in our favor. It has been growing and in an upward trend. So we would like to sustain that. Uh, but at the same time, we would like to, you know, uh, diversify and look at other opportunities where we can grow. Um, these are the main exports uh, to Switzerland and Liechtenstein. You may notice that um, it's quite uh, becoming um, a good mix of, uh, of uh, other products other than uh, food and agricultural products. So there's gold. Uh, the biggest uh, gold refinery in the world is in Switzerland. So that's why many of the gold uh, around the world goes here, pro are being processed here in Switzerland. Uh, the vacuum cleaners and other um, appliances, small appliances, um, these are actually a very recent um, development, um, mainly because of uh, you know, the location of uh, certain companies um, uh, who have located in the Philippines. And these are now exported here in Europe and uh, including Switzerland. So we have the usual static converters and electronic integrated circuits that are used in, um, in various industrial and um, um, IT applications. In terms of food, um, these are also some of the products that are um, uh, being exported here um, in Switzerland. Um, coconut products, mucilages and thickeners. These are the carrageenan products, tropical fruits and juices, cane sugar, and of course, tuna, um, both uh, prepared and frozen potatoes. Um, I would like to um, uh, remind um, and point out that in terms of food, while the opportunities are you know, quite wide, um, there's a need to, um, for the certifications and standards to be um, observed. So um, Switzerland accepts EU certifications like uh, this one, this green logo, um, but they do have their own uh, organic and fair trade certifications. In terms of food and marine products, MSC um, is, uh, is quite a standard requirement. Um, another, um, now I'm going to the tools or the areas where, you know, um, our exporters can look at how, you know, they can, they can um, see and uh, read more about 
uh, the possibilities and the opportunities in various sectors. So SIPO, SIPO is the Swiss uh, import promotion um, office, and they came up with three studies, um, the market study on value-added textiles, natural ingredients, and processed food. Um, the studies can be accessed in this link. So don't worry, it's quite long here, but the, the slide will be shared to all of you and then you can access this link. And this, um, these studies provide, um, aside from the usual, you know, the environment and how to export, it also includes the buyers, the list of buyers with whom you can contact if uh, you would like to export these products to um, Switzerland. Um, this is also just to show um, a bit about the Swiss economy. While they are small in terms of population, they are big in terms of uh, um, exports. So they export more watches than, they are, than their population. So um, they, in, in, in 2018, they exported this much, uh, 24, almost 24 million watches. Um, their coffee is one of their big exports to think that they do not have coffee. So what they do, they import all these green coffee and then they process them, roast them, and then create these uh, blends. Um, some of their exports also are chemicals and pharmaceutical products, machinery and electronics. And then um, in terms of uh, their relationship with the EU, um, it is one of the, it is their biggest trading partner where 52% of uh, Switzerland's exports goes to the EU. Um, these are also some of the world-renowned global brands, Swiss brands, um, where, you know, as exporter, you can be part of their supply chain. Of course, we have our um, cocoa beans. Um, we have our um, fruits and vegetables that could be part of the supply chain of some of the food processors here in Switzerland. And of course, uh, for industrial um, and machine parts, there are the the watchmakers and other um, machinery brands. Um, there are opportunities in industrial goods. So I mentioned that earlier. Um, these are some, some of them, chemicals, garments, machine building, electrical industry and metal industry, um, renewable energy and precious metals. I will not go through the slides, but uh, um, these will be shared in the deck um, um, to be sent out to the participants. And then in terms of uh, uh, value added tax, um, it's much lower compared to the rest of Europe at 7.7%. Uh, for tariffs, if you'd like to check specifically the tariff rates of your product, you can go to this link. And um, similar to access to markets, it will show you the tariff rates. You can even see the tariff rates of your competitors. So you can see how, uh, how you fare, how you can you know, um, price your product and see where your margin uh, can be drawn upon. Usually, you know, um, the, the FTA will provide you with some form of uh, you know, margin in terms of pricing your product. Um, these are some of the useful links um, that uh, you may um, want to visit. Uh, the FTA, the text of the, the full text of the FTA can be accessed here, the approved exporter scheme as well. And then uh, the Swiss Chambers of Commerce are listed here. And then um, some um, possible contacts. Um, we have the Philippine Swiss Business Council here in, uh, in Makati. So you may uh, want to engage with them if you have questions. And then there's also the Swiss Asian Chamber based here in, uh, in Zurich. So just uh, some, again, links on their economy, the government website, and then the laws and regulations of the country. And uh, these are some events that we will be coming up um, soon. So we'll be holding a, a webinar on how to export to EFTA markets. It will be in uh, 27 May. This is in coordination with the EFTA Secretariat. So for this event, we will have speakers from Switzerland, Norway, and uh, Iceland. They will talk about you know, the trade flows, the logistics um, and on how to export. And then uh, hopefully by then, we will also be able to launch the free trade agreement, the EFTA web tool um, that will guide you step-by-step -step on how to export 
to these markets. Um, there will be a uh, Philippine-Swiss Joint Economic Commission on the 17th of June, and a Philippine Business Forum uh, will be held prior to that. So that's it uh, from me. Uh, thank you very much. Um, here are my contact details, um, the email address, and then you may also want to visit um, our Facebook page and our Instagram, um, follow us, and then you may find some of the updates um, that we have um, here. So thank you very much.